And now, now, it's Boomer Life. Lifestyle discussion designed to make your life more engaging, meaningful, and complete. Celebrating the baby boomer generation, this is Boomer Life on Sea Isle 650. Well, hello and welcome to Boomer Life here on Sea Isle 650. I'm Sterling Fox, and this episode is all about hearing. And it's always a pleasure to welcome Dr. Ted Venema to the program. Dr. Ted is an audiologist and here representing the good folks at NextGen and Mainland Hearing Centers across British Columbia. Nice to see you again, Dr. Ted. Yeah, good to see you again, too. Well, we got a lot to talk about this hour, but first you have to tell us a story. Dr. Ted is one of the better (laughs) storytellers who visits us regularly on Boomer Life. And I love listening to this guy's stories. And he's just an interesting dude who has just returned from an audiology convention in, of all places, Turkey, where where you were invited to speak to a group of audiologists from the Middle East, mostly Iran. Mm -hmm. So uh, how on earth, uh, this is, you were invited by a Canadian hearing yeah. company, hearing yeah. aid company. Yeah, that's right. And yeah. what was the name of that company? That's Unitron. Unitron and you used to yeah, work for them. I did so. Yes, I did. Okay, so you've maintained a, uh, some kind yep. of relationship mm-hmm. with these guys yep. over the years. So and when they sent me to Turkey, they told me, Ted, you'll fit right in. <laughs> <laughs> I would have expected them to say nothing less. Oh, yeah, of course. So now when you go over, you fly half a world yep. away to speak to, in this case, these are your peers. Yep. These are audiologists like yourself. Yep, from Tehran. Right. So, yep. and, and they, this is, this, I would imagine they don't get out much. And I don't mean to say <laughs> that in, uh, it, it, they probably just don't. Well, and they have, I guess, apparently to go to Turkey, the, the Iranians need no visa. Aha. Uh-huh. So they like to head over there as a vacation spot. Okay. Now, mind you, I've heard in Iran, there's an area called Shiraz, which is really quite interesting as well. Like it's like our Okanagan kind of pretty. Oh, but, okay. Uh, at any rate, this was a group of 30 Iranian audiologists who had schooled at the University of Tehran. And they offer bachelor's, master's, and PhD degrees over there. And okay. Stuff like that. But they had come for a conference held and hosted by... Unitron, this hearing aid company I used to work for. Right. So now you would just refer, you would be the dashing figure from <laughs> from the West, where uh, I would assume relative to Iran, there are more cutting edge technologies yep. at play, mm-hmm. more people doing investigations yep. on a broader scale, better research into yep. the, into hearing and all of those yep. issues. So what did these professionals, again, these are audiologists yep. like you. Yep. So when you travel a, a half a world away and sit down with the group of pros like yeah. you, what did they want to know? Well, I often present at conferences in Canada and United States, too, like state and provincial conferences. And right. those are, you know, populated by audiologists or hearing instrument practitioners as well. Okay. And I often deliver topics that they know about, but they want to learn more about. Okay. Like, you know, topics on tinnitus, ringing in the ears, or topics on certain anatomy or physiology questions about the ear or certain new de- developments in hearing aid technology. Okay, sure. And that, I imagine, yeah. was pretty a particular interest to them, yeah. right? Yeah. So my talk over there was focused, it was called Common Clinical Encounters. Do we really know them? And it was all touched on all these aspects of testing hearing. And, yep, they've all done these things, and they have all known about them, but I always uncapped a certain issue about them saying well do you really know why that test turns out the way it does Mm -hmm. here's a bit of an inside scoop something interesting so i'm not here to tell you something brand new but here to just get you to look at something in a a little bit of a different way and then my three-hour talk was followed by more product specific talk from unitron representatives themselves unitron is one of seven hearing aid manufacturers and it's canada's only homegrown hearing aid company oh, out, I didn't know out that. of Kitchener, Ontario. Okay, okay. all right. And by the way, that's kind of the mecca or the Jerusalem of hearing aid companies and is Kitchener, Cambridge, Interesting. Ontario. Ho- for some so, oh, Kitchener, Waterloo, the, yep. the home of the Blackberry is there also the home of the, uh, the, the hearing technology yeah. industry. Yep. So now these guys, what a hearing test... Uh, performed by one of these uh, audiologists who just listened to you speak last mm-hmm. week. Would a hearing test at an audiologist's place in Tehran be quite similar yep. to a hearing yep. test anywhere in BC? Quite. All right. Quite. Yes, yes, quite. Uh, okay. They haven't quite split off from us yet. Ah, okay. <laughs> so so no, the, the, the procedure is basically the they same. They will do the quite the same. In fact, their whole training is quite similar. And they're quite proud of it. The, they do have quite a good school in audiology. I've had some students 
in Canada who were from Iran, and they were trained at University of Tehran, and they, they knew their stuff. They're pretty good. Interesting. And they do the a hearing test as a hearing test as a hearing test, you know? It's just done in another, in another language. Exactly. And the hearing aid products, however, okay, they're going to be buying them from Europe or, 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 you know, subsidiaries of the hearing aid companies. Closer to home. Yeah. Right. I mean, some, some of the main hearing aid companies are placed in Denmark. There's two out of Denmark. Mm -hmm. There's one in Switzerland. You know, they're... Uh so, this, uh, and then there's a, f a few American ones. So, a ca can a Canadian person who goes to a, a next gen or a mainland yep. hearing center and has the test yep. and discovers to his or her chagrin that perhaps a little technical assistance would be required yeah. here, can that Canadian client, yeah. Dr. Ted, order a hearing aid from anywhere in the world? Yep. yep. Uh, here, th of those of those hearing aid manufacturers, there's about seven, like I was saying. Okay. Some are European-based, some are United States-based. All of them have subsidiaries. Okay. So Canada will have a subsidiary office of each of those seven manufacturers. Okay. And, of course, it has its own hearing aid company itself, and that is Unitron. But mm -hmm. Unitron has an American subsidiary. A European Dutch, yeah, yeah, right, okay. So, that, that, so, you know, the hearing aids dispensed from next-gen mainland hearing will be from all all sorts of manufacturers. Okay. Uh, a couple of questions based on uh, the stuff you've already told us. Mm -hmm. uh, I want to go back to the a hearing instrument practitioner versus audiologist, oh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, those designations yeah. in a minute. But you also said that in one of the questions in the Q&A session you did after your speech yeah. in Turkey, that people wanted to know they were asking about ringing in the ears. Yeah, that was and, one of them. And yeah. you described that as tinnitus. Yeah. Well, uh, ringing in the ears was on Jeopardy the other day. Uh, and I got it because uh -huh. I do Boomer Life and I know Dr. Ted. <laughs> I got the right answer. I nailed it. Except the guy on Jeopardy who got it and got it right mm -hmm. called it tinnitus. Ah, uh, well, so tomato, tomato. So is, is that like a European-Canadian pronunciation versus really, an American pronunciation? Not really. Some people call it tinnitus. I think itis sounds like an infection. Uh, but, it does, rather, but doesn't I, it? To be technical, itis is I-T-I-S, whereas tinnitus, the last four letters, are I-T-U-S. Oh, okay. So there's really no real rule. I call it tinnitus. Okay. If you called it tinnitus... Either way, Whatever. Alex would have given us both a point. There you go. <laughs> okay. <laughs> now, let's talk about these designations. Now, first of all, let's start with yourself. You're a Ph.D. <laughs> audiologist. Uh, yeah. Obviously, to get there, you have to have a master's and a bachelor's undergraduate yeah. degree. Yeah. Uh, w at what point did you discover in your academic career that audiology was where you wanted to go? And after that, how many more years did you have to, to, to put in to get the designation okay. you now enjoy? <laughs> well, I studied... My bachelor's was from a, a college in Michigan, Calvin College, and I studied philosophy, ancient Greek. Mm. Had nothing to do with this stuff at all. Worked for a lot of years at Stelco Steel Landscaping Juvenile Detention Center in oh Calgary. My. Okay. <laughs> and then decided I'd become a speech pathologist. Oh, okay. A speech therapist. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. My girlfriend and I were walking up Hastings Street, and she came up with this idea. You're kind of a yacker. Why don't you try that? Become a speech therapist. I thought, cool. So I went to school in Bellingham, Washington. Western Washington Western, University. Yep. And I got a master's. Okay. And, but I was studying speech pathology, and halfway through I thought, ah, I think I prefer audiology, the hearing side. Okay. Because speech therapy or speech pathology and audiology are both in what's called communication disorders. All right. And you get your master's in one or the other. Okay. And so partway through speech I decided, nah, I think I like the hearing better. Okay. I'd never heard of audiology before. Only once I was in school. Well, and I'd never heard of audiology until I started Boomer Life uh, and, and our hearing shows with you. Yeah, so, well, you know, we're all kind of in the same boat yeah, here. We're yeah. all learning as we go along. I call it audiology, O-D-D-I-O-L-O-G-Y. Uh, uh, Sometimes oh, yeah, it's pretty odd. I appreciate the spelling <laughs> variables, too. So uh, when you so then you got a master's degree in audiology yeah. as opposed to speech yeah. pathology. And then I worked for, as a clinician for a few years okay. at, in, in Toronto at the Canadian Hearing Society. Okay. And then after three years, I thought I said to myself, self, I think I I can teach this stuff. I'd like to become a prof. Okay. I think I'm going to go back to school and get a PhD. Now that and a nickel will get you a cup of coffee, but mm. these days that and a dollar fifty. But I studied at the University of Oklahoma, and uh, home of the Sooners. Ever since I done lost my accent, though, ever okay. since we moved up here. Great football. Yeah, they do. And uh, so at that point, a PhD in audiology. In audiology. But okay. Yeah. So yep. now, uh, here in now, is that 
because you graduated from the University of Oklahoma, mm -hmm. does your audiology designation, is it different because <laughs> of the, if you had graduated from maybe UBC or no. the University of Toronto? Well, that's a good question you're asking, Sterling, because in Canada, the audiologist needs a master's degree. Okay. And to get a master's, you go to school for two to three years after your bachelor's right. degree. Right, yeah. And then you get a master's. And that's the way it was in the United States, too. But about 10, 15 years ago, they changed it. And they've, instead of getting a master's after the bachelor's, they made a four-year clinical doctorate called the A. U D the odd okay just like an optometrist has a four-year doctorate from University of Waterloo okay you know or a dentist a DDS he or she went to school for four years after their bachelor's degree right uh, an MD same thing a medical doctor he or she goes to school for four years after a bachelor's degree so audiology wanted to put itself into that into a doctoring profession in quotes uh, okay so the American audiologist always has an A U D the Canadian still goes by the old way of the master's degree, but both of them do the same thing. Okay, now, do uh, when you become an audiologist, yeah. uh, as you would, for example, a medical doctor, yeah. is there a period of residency or yeah. internship yep, that's required? Yep, yep. To get the AUD, I believe it's almost a year-long clinical practicum okay. at the end. It's your fourth year. Okay. And, and that is not built into the master's degree. So some Canadians with a master's degree in audiology, some of them elect and say, I think I want to upgrade to the AUD because okay. I'd like but to call myself an doctor. audiologist. Yeah, I'd okay. like to. And the, so they have to go to the States for that they upgrade do. then, yep, don't they? They do. And okay. some, some of them can earn, some, if they've got five years of clinical experience, they are entitled to earn it online. Ah. And they can't, some universities offer the AUD online as a bridge so that the remaining master's degree Americans who had master's as well could upgrade and get this AUD. Okay, so now here in Canada, let's, let's just yeah. bring the, the whole conversation north of the 49th yeah. here. Yeah. You are a PhD yeah. audiologist. So um, That's different. Uh, right. So yeah. there's the, the, there are three designations that I'm trying to figure out sure, here. Sure, okay? let's do that. One, one is uh, the, the, the high end, the medical uh, sort of, uh, I guess, superior in this category would be the ear, nose, and throat Surgeon, yeah, correct. Yeah, that followed yeah. by the audiologist, which is a which is a university trained, just like an optometrist. You okay, can think of the ear, nose, and throat doctor like an ophthalmologist. Okay, so yeah. we're doing the eye ear comparison yeah. Yeah, here. Yeah, let's okay. do that. That's eye a good ear, idea. Because okay. then that that we can kind of, and then the audiologist has a master's degree. The op optometrist has an has a four year clinical doctorate, mm -hmm. just like the American AUD did. Right, but sure. Both have, are similar in that they don't do surgery. Right. Okay. Right. It's like the difference between a psychiatrist and a psychologist. Mm -hmm. you know, a psychiatrist is an MD. A psychologist is a PhD. Right. They right. both do similar things. Right. But at any rate, the, the medical doctor specializes in surgery. Right. Okay? Exactly. The, 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 the surgeon, he or she does surgery on the ear. An audiologist does not. But an, a surgeon can't fit hearing aids. Oh. A surgeon doesn't know about hearing aids. Okay, so, so now there's a third designation, yes. and uh, and it's and I suppose it's at the bottom of, of the ladder of three, but it still sounds like a pretty important job, and that would be the hearing instrument practitioner. Yes, that person is a is a has a two year college diploma. Okay, and you know what? They've got more common sense than I ever have, and that's why I never like to put them on a totem pole. Right, I'd I know. rather put them like on a triangle of three they work together like a team i know and it was my unfortunate decision no to worries. rank them hey, in, in numerical I, order hey, but hey. you know we do that we I organize know. ourselves I that way I know. and i what but i think it's a, a really smart idea because we all know about eyes yeah we don't pay half as much attention no, to our ears and our hearing nope. as we do to our eyes. Yep. But in the eye world, the ophthalmologist yep. is the eye surgeon. Correct. The optometrist is the professional who fits you and g tests yep. you and gets you your glasses. That's correct. And then the uh, optician. The optician is a two-year college diploma graduate, and that person usually fills a prescription. Right from the ophthalmologist or the optometrist, both of who can prescribe glasses. Ah. The, the hearing instrument practitioner is a little bit different from the optician, though. He or she also has a two-year college diploma. Right, right. But in the hearing field, like the audiologist, the HIP, hearing instrument practitioner, can test hearing and prescribe hearing aids. Oh, okay. But the HIP is limited in scope of practice to adults. Okay. Whereas the audiologist can do the same 
for infants. Oh. There's a difference. A baby can't tell you what he or she hears. Well, that's right. So the you work have to test them with brain waves and I, everything else. I was going to say totally it must, different kettle must be a lot more yeah. sophisticated because of the inability to respond. Right. So for the mainstream public, though, yeah. Joel Blow and you and I, you can be seen by an HIP or an audiologist, and both are equally, they're qualified in giving you a good hearing test and prescribing hearing aids. Okay, now we need to take a break. Uh, because Dwayne is having kittens already <laughs> on the other side of the glass. And heck, we just got started. It's going to be a long hour here. Let's not give him too much grief. But just before we do, uh, one thing that you have said to us many times, and this is where we're going to start when we come back. Okay. We, uh, we don't pay as much attention to our hearing, no, certainly don't. as we do to our vision. We don't. So here's a startling statistic from Dr. Ted, friends. The lag time between the time that a typical Canadian with some kind of hearing issue finds out about this deficiency in his or her hearing, the time between finding out and actually doing something, doing anything about it, yeah. is seven years. Yeah, five to seven years. Are we foot draggers? Holy <laughs> Moses. Or what? <laughs> this is Boomer Life and that startling statistic after that. We need to take a couple of minutes to digest that one. And we're back with Dr. Ted Venema from NextGen and Mainland Hearing Centers across British Columbia right after this timeout. Celebrating the baby boomer lifestyle. This is Boomer Life on CL 650.